Hey everyone, welcome back to Miniature Painting 101, a series of videos where I teach you all about painting miniatures from start to finish and everything in between. Whatever you want, I will paint it. And this is part 124, Black Marble. Uh, many people have requested I do marble, specifically Black Marble, which is one of the more uh, weird ones, but I like it. So I started off by priming the entire piece black. Now I'm going to be painting this piece of, of Bastion black, uh, or black marble. Now the thing is with black marble is it's very subtle, and that's what we'll be doing today. We'll be building up the, the background stippling or marbling effect and then doing some veins. So of course, it's a good idea to start with the model primed black. And now this step is not necessary um, if you primed it black, but in case you just want it, if you don't want to go over the primer, you want actually want a base coat color, uh, I recommend just doing an Abaddon black base coat. Of course, I thinned down some Lamia medium. That way it goes on nice and thin. But as I said, if you want to just go for the black primer, feel free. Or if you end up, you know, priming it gray, then obviously you'll have to base coat it with uh, Abaddon black first. So, so this step is optional, obviously. But uh, yeah, that way you just get a nice uniform color before you begin. And now the rest of the steps are going to be stippling, basically, until we get to the veins part of it. So now we're going to take a very stiff brush, a uh, stiff stippling brush, and we're going to take some gray liner from Reaper, and we're going to essentially stipple a random pattern throughout the uh, the uh, piece of, of terrain, or whatever you want to do to paint marble. So after this point, basically about um, about 40% to 50% of the piece will be covered in stippling from the gray liner, but it's, I'm just trying to go in a random pattern and uh, build up from there, and about as about half of it is black. And then all we're gonna do is with each uncurring step, you wanna go lighter and lighter with your amount of paint on your stippling, and then you want to uh, intermix it between the, the previous areas and the black. So now we're gonna take some shadowed stone and add it to our mix, so that's a one-to-one -one mix of shadowed stone and gray liner and we're going to repeat the stippling process. I'm gonna go in a similar pattern to what I did the previous step and intentionally go or into the previous step, but I'm also gonna do a little bit within the black. So with each step, you're filling a little bit within the black area and a little bit within the previous steps. And that way we'll get an intermittent like uh, a mixing of all of these stipples uh, so that some will be lighter than others and a pattern will essentially emerge from your random uh, stippling on the, uh, the piece. So now we'll just use the same thing with just shadowed stone. Once again, just stippling, lighter and lighter, um, a smaller amount of paint each step, but going a little bit within our previous areas and um, a little bit within the black. And as you can see, a pattern is just starting to emerge just from our um, from our stippling. So as you can see now, it's starting to invoke, like almost, uh, you can clearly see now the, the pattern of, of gray starting to appear within the black. And that's what we're going for, for the subtle black marble. And now we'll do this once again with stone gray, uh, the middle, just stone gray by itself from uh, from Reaper. And we'll just repeat this process once again, lighter and lighter amount of paint, some stippling within our previous areas, some stippling within the black, um, and just lighter and lighter. And as you can see now, pattern is really starting to emerge. And we'll just keep going with even lighter and lighter colors, of course, a little more stippling. As you can see, now we're starting to get that really, that marbling effect in the back. And that's what we're going for, essentially, with the black marble. Just a lot of stippling. And then we're going to add some weathered gray, which is the lightest gray in the stone gray triad, or sort of weathered stone from Reaper. And we're going to repeat this process once again. And as you can see, it's just starting to really bring the pattern to life with each in each step. And that's what we're going for, just a little bit within the gray, a little bit with the black. And now we're getting that, that black marble appearance. It just takes a lot of steps to build it up, but it's really worth it in the end to get the cool effect. And then finally, weathered stone just by itself. Now I intentionally used a wet palette in the end because then I can add uh, for the previous combination in this one because I'll be using these two colors to create the veins afterwards. And we did the final step once again, just with weathered stone. With each step you can see that I'm just using less and less paint. But right now, I, I think there's too much gray and not enough black, so I really want to bring back some of the black to make a more random looking pattern. So I'm just going to take some Abaddon black and, and go over some of the areas that are too heavily gray with Abaddon black and stipple it as well, which will bring the black, put the black back into these areas and just break up the gray a bit and, and give it more of that, that marbled appearance. So as you see now, it just it creates a more distinctive pattern 
and, uh, and just breaks up the gray significantly. I'm just going to do this with the, the black all over the piece as well, just to visit, break it up. And now we got our cool marbling pattern, and it's pretty good. So now the next thing is to add uh, some veins to it after the, uh, the black stippling is done. And I just want to break it up a little bit at a time. As you can see, guys, I'm. I'm Stippling obviously takes doesn't take a lot of paint. So now we're going to take the, our second last combination, stone gray and weathered stone, and I heavily I heavily thinned it down with some lamia medium. And now we're going to create our veins. So I'm just going to draw some very very hairline thin lines uh, in the direction of the patterns. And as you see, just I'm choosing. I can clearly see the the pattern of how it's it's emerging, and I'm going to go with the pattern and just create these thin lines. And then I'm, afterwards, I'm going to uh, off camera. I'm going to thin them down slightly with some Abaddon black again. That way, they're just hair lines, uh, creating these these veins along the pattern, uh, just dictating where the the uh, the pattern's going. And as I said, really heavily thinned it down. That way, it's going to dry even darker and really blend in with the uh, with the colors. So I'm just going with the pattern, seeing how it's emerging, and uh, drawing in these veins accordingly. And so then I'm going to take some uh, Abaddon Black and thin it down even more thin these lines up uh, after the step as well. Just to make them really nice and thin. We've got our nice marble effect. And here's what the lines look like after I thin it down. And then all I do is one more time with some weathered stone, the lightest of the grays, and I just repeat this process along the so certain parts of the veins to make them really stand out and pop. Kind of, you know, that's what happens with the marbling. It just uh, has a little bit of lightness to some parts of the vein, so I just used this weathered stone to do a very nice highlight just to, to bring out certain parts of the veins and make them really bright. And you can stop after this if you wish, and the other option is to cover it with a varnish. Uh, I'm just gonna show you both conversions, so that way you can decide what you want. I typically go with a varnish because it adds that shine to it because it is marble, but it's up to you. But as you can see now, we basically accomplished the, uh, the marbling, the, the black marble effect. It just took a lot of stippling and then some uh, doing some veins in the same direction of the pattern. But I'm just gonna keep going and go do some of the vein work at the top part of it, just to bring out some of the veins there. This is weathered stone. And that's about it. So then we'll just show you what the finished product looks like now. So now this is what the finished product looks like when, uh, before the varnish is applied, just because the varnish hit, being hit by my light source may uh, remove some of the detail to the camera because it'll kind of blind the camera. So this is what the pattern looks like. And then I just did a couple quick coats of a gloss varnish. And uh, here's what the model, or sorry, the product looks like at the end. As you can see now, it really does have that marble effect to it, but as you can see, it just has a bit of shine. Uh, I applied two, two coats of gloss varnish, and now it is it does appear like black marble. It's very subtle, um, but you can clearly see the veins and the pattern emerging from it. And that, my friends, is how to do black marble in a more realistic fashion, but I think it turned out really nice. And next week I'm going to do white marble. Just to show you the same thing, but it'll be easier to pick up the contrast because it's, it's going to be dark colors on white as opposed to lighter colors on, on black. So thank you as always for watching this episode of Miniature Painting 101. And stay tuned for next week's episode, part 125, which is just around the corner. But if you don't want to wait for next week, check out The Warp. Click on the link below for a free 14-day trial to my premium YouTube channel. 
But now we get to see like six months worth of miniature painting 101 episodes for anyone else. You get to see over 100 start to finish painting tutorials, battle reports, face off episodes, an airbrush 101 series, a QJ series, just some awesome more gaming content. So please go check out the warp. I think you'll love it. So stay tuned for more videos. Until next time, this is Jay saying, happy painting, everyone.